Now we've talked in other videos about Polk County streams, overlooked, remote, places that most people don't even know that they stock in the state of Tennessee. Now, one thing you gotta understand is, I know a lot of you guys are gonna say, you guys are blowing up our local fisheries. Stop doing this. I wanna keep it to myself. I'm the only one that knows about this place. That is not a good thing, okay? The purpose of these fish being put in there is for people to catch them. And if there's nobody utilizing the resource, the state is simply going to stop stocking them. You know, we've already lost a couple of streams in Polk County that have been removed from the stocking list because nobody utilized that resource. And they didn't want that to happen here and neither did we. This is a great place. I mean, the one thing that we left after fishing this creek right here, which is known as Tumbling Creek, is what a great place for people that don't mind primitive remote camping. All right, so take a look at this. Troy is gonna pitch in this log. Go ahead, Troy. We think there's some rainbows. There's always, there's always trout hanging in log jams. We're gonna see if there's one underneath this one. You gotta be real precise with your casts because there's a lot of trees and debris. But if you can get that bait to drop in the right place, they're gonna come out and ambush it. You know what they say, folks, third time is a charm. Ooh, that might be it. Got him! Look at that! Wow! That's how it's done. Look at the jumper. Ned even fell out of the tree. Look at that. And folks, that's how it's done right there. Okay, folks, as you can see, we're fishing this log jam. Pretty tight quarters, but hey, you can yank them out if you do it right. It's a challenge. Fish Got it. it. Oh, oh my gosh. All right, get out of there. Mick, no. you're about to lose your turn. No, no, I'm not. Okay, here we go. We're gonna try this one more time. All right, so keep an eye on that float. It is actually between Whoa. those two logs. Down there in the middle, fish on them. Now, you gotta get him up over the log. Look at that. Woohoo! Drag him on up. Go a little far. Put him in the net, baby. Look at that. And that, folks, is why you come to Tumbling Creek. All right, so Mick's getting ready to rebate and head out there again. So far, the most fish we have seen around here have been in these log jams. Uh, you know, we've we've kind of walked, we don't know when they stocked us last, could have been two weeks ago for all we know, but the fish have spread out. They're not in the holes, they're they're spread all over the system. So Mick's gonna take his peach garlic fire bait and uh, he's gonna drift it down. And remember, if you're gonna use fire bait with a float like we are, look at where Mick's float, look at where Mick's sinker is. Drop your bottom weight just a few inches above your bait to keep that down because the bait is going to lift up that much in the water. Is Remember, that. fire bait floats, people. It's not like a salmon egg. It doesn't sink. So you've got to adjust your technique properly to be able to stay successful with that. And is that a bite already? Yep. And we already had a bite. It's just yep. a good sign. A good sign. That's a very good sign. Now remember, he's not using a massive piece. We're gonna show you what he's doing exactly. This is peach garlic fire bait. You guys have seen us use it 5,000 times on these videos, simple as that. And he's gonna open that jar. He's gonna grab a small little piece. And Just roll it in a ball. And do yourself a favor, take a whiff as soon as you open that jar. <laughs> and you can smell <laughs> the garlic. Yeah, it, for those of you that are wondering, it doesn't smell like peaches, that's just the, kind of the color. It smells like garlic, and that's why the trout like it, and you're gonna see how quickly they eat it here. And remember, we've already caught several fish out of this spot already, so for us to get more bites, it just speaks to what the bait does. Got him. Ooh, my Ooh, I God. I got him. Woo, he came right out there. 
Trout. Yeah, that's actually a really nice trout. I mean, I can't believe they stock them this big in these streams. Hey, Nick, you're going down to Chattanooga. Can you stay close to the camera? Look at that. Ooh, right over the branch. Anything come after that egg? Yeah, that's what I was looking at. Got him. Okay, okay. Yeah. Hold on one second, Troy. So, I don't know if you guys saw what just happened, but Troy made a cast and it hit one of the little branches coming out and one of his eggs fell off. And as soon as that egg hit the water, what happened? A trout came out and slammed it, which tells us Troy's cast number two is probably going to get eaten. And he's got one egg left. He had two eggs on there. Now that might not be far enough, but keep an eye on that float. Yeah, the fish just came and grabbed it. He's on. Got yep. him. Oh, under the... Look at that. Let him go. There are some ferocious trout underneath that. And a good one. Daddy. Look at that. Look at that. Now that. That just shows you that sometimes playing with fire and casting in places where you may get tangled actually open up opportunities like that one just did. I mean, we saw that trout eat the egg to fall off the hook. We knew to throw another egg in there. Oh, there's one. Whoa, Ooh, jumper. jumper. Yeah. That little seam over there. In this hole, I've been using pink shrimp. These things work really well. I'm gonna put a couple on this hook here. Grab a couple out. Put the lid back on so you don't lose any. One, two, there you go. Ready to rock and roll. All right, so what size fire hook is that? Do you know, is that a 10? I think we ran out of our 14s. We, this is a 12. That's a 12? This okay. is a 12. And then as you can see here, I'm running a small split shot. Another spl small split shot. Just a little bit larger split shot under my float. And you're running three different shots because? Uh, in this hole, it's a deeper hole, so I want to keep that bait all in line with the bobber. So I know where that bait is at all times. boy, Troy. Don't run to Tennessee. Not as, not as big as Minx, but fish is a fish. That's right. Ooh, he's been eating. Look at that thing. That thing is, he got a broken tail. He's hungry. Got him. There he is. Oh my gosh. There you go, Troy. Whoa, he wants to go back. These are some hard fighting trout. Right in the jaw. That's where we like to see the fire hook right there. So we can put them out for you guys to catch them. Okay guys, I've been using peach garlic in the upper uh, top of this log jam here that we've been fishing. So I decided to go ahead and change over and try the silver label. So the nice thing about the silver label eggs is it only takes one per hook. They're a great double sized egg and you put that on there on a number 12 fire hook underneath your fire float and a couple small split shot. I'm just using two. Uh, the water's not real deep and not real fast. So I'm trying to keep my stuff a little bit higher for my presentation. This is nice because the silver label is a bigger egg. It's double the size of some of our other eggs. And these things are great. They got glitter on them. Just put one right on the hook and you're right there. Let's see if you can get right there to where you need to be. Not easy to do. Let's try that one more time. He took that egg off on the second cast.
And he's there back. And when you guys saw him coming in on film, we coast up on the float, the and that thing came and crushed it. I mean, what more could you ask for? This Coming at him. Rainbow trout fishing. Attaboy, Troy. In East Tennessee, and look at that every time. This is right near Okoy Lake Number Three, and it's a little bit of a tributary. Now, this creek is stocked every year, twice in March, twice in April, twice in May, and it's done so by TWA's Teleco River Hatchery. And they truck fish in here and they release them six times a year. Now we're told that it gets somewhere around, you know, oof, probably 1,800 fish a year, somewhere around there. And what's interesting is we talked to a lot of locals over here that, that told us three things. You know, most of them lived in the far corner of Tennessee or they lived in Georgia and they told us they've been coming here for a couple decades. And they also said, they see people come in here with nets because it's so remote and they try to get the trout that way. And I'm talking big nets in the evening. Okay, the other thing they told us is they come camping in July and they catch rainbow trout. Well, the state doesn't stock it after, say, Memorial Day. So that shows you that the trout are spreading out. There's just not a lot of pressure here. Now, what we recognized is we came here the day after a major, major storm. And a couple people that were camping there said, you guys missed the trout stocking by two days. And anybody that knows TWRA posts the week that they're going to stock. We came here on a Friday. So that means that they stocked on a Wednesday. Okay. With that being said, they said that they stocked and the river blew apart and came up and doubled in size because of big thunderstorms and the fish were spread out. Now we walked about a half mile section and we only found congregated trout underneath this big fallen tree we didn't just find some trout here we caught probably 15 to 18 trout right underneath this tree and what an experience it was now the guys had to use three different baits to do so they caught them on pink shrimp they caught them on silver label and they caught them on peach garlic all fished on the new fire hooks with the fire float and it proved that trout sometimes go to cover a lot of times we always fish big pools and holes and pockets. We did catch a few fish in those areas, but most of them were congregated in these trees. Now, again, right now we are about an hour and a half from Chattanooga. We're only inches from the Georgia and the Tennessee border, closest to Ducktown. Okay, there is a beautiful campground here. It is a perfect primitive campground known as Tumbling Creek Campground. If you go to the Cherokee National Forest website, it says there's eight campsites here that are available. They're pretty good sized campsites, but there's people look like they just kind of set up whatever they want and camp. It's one of those kind of places where it's remote. You're not going to be bothered. You're going to be out in the wilderness catching trout. Now, we're only 30 minutes from North uh, uh, Murphy, North Carolina. We're only two hours from Atlanta. You're in an area that is surrounded by people and there's nobody in this remote part of the forest. It's a perfect opportunity for you to get out there, avoid the crowds, and catch half pound to one pound Tennessee trout, all rainbows. Now the state also told us, while well, we didn't see any, we know they're here, they put in some three to five pound rainbows as well, two per stocking. So hey, maybe you can be the lucky one to catch a monster like that here in East Tennessee. Potsky products are available at sporting goods stores near you. If you can't find the specific color, size that you want, make sure to go to Potsky.com. And as a thank you for watching Potsky Outdoors, we're going to show you a coupon code to be used for 10% off your next order.